Hello guys, welcome to another calculus video. Today is going to be another physics video and we're going to be taking a look at how to calculate kinetic energy of a spinning object. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, the first object we're going to look at is a disk because I feel that's the easiest way to explain how to calculate the rotational kinetic energy. So we're looking at some disk with um, thickness, like so the thickness this way, we're just going to call it H for height. Um, and then we'll also have, it'll have some radius and we'll call this radius capital R. And it'll have some uniform density called del delta. And that'll become important later on because we're talking about kinetic energy. So what matters is mass, not volume. So we're going to assume it's just spinning and it's spinning at a constant rate omega. Now omega is in units of radians per second. So it's how fast the angle is changing, not necessarily how fast um, any particle is moving. So the way we are able to calculate rotational kinetic energy is just using the formula for normal kinetic energy, which is one half m v squared. Now, the thing is, when we have a disk, not every part of the disk is moving at the same speed. So if you imagine a big disk right here, and then it's rotating this way, and here's the center. Some point here, let's say it's rotating at one radian per second. If something's one unit away, one unit away from the center, then it's moving at uh, one unit per second, right? Let's say one inch, right? It's moving at one inch per second because uh, the radius is one inch. But if it's five inches out, right? We'll say that's five inches, because why not? Then it's really, it's moving at five inches per second, even though the entire disk is only moving at one radian per second. So that's why it's a little bit more difficult to calculate kinetic energy when we're talking about something that's rotating. So what we're gonna do is we're going to integrate over the entire area of this big disk here, right here. So we're going to integrate over this entire area. We're going to do that using r and theta. So we're going to take an infinitesimally small triangle right here. So the angle here is d theta, right? And so this outside part is just r d theta. And then we're going to integrate as theta goes around here and as our little, our variable is going to be little r. R is going to go from zero to big R, and theta is going to go from zero to two pi. And so we're going to have a double integral. So the first thing we need to get, we need to do, is figure out what goes inside our double integral. So we just need to calculate the kinetic energy of every um, like chunk of mass that's inside this disk. So let's just take this definition, and we'll say this is equal to one half. Now, the mass of any chunk of area within this um, within this disk is going to just be the volume of that times the density. So we're going to do the density. And then the volume is just the um, area times the thickness. So in this case, the thickness h is just going to be basically a constant multiplier, right? Because it doesn't change as r and theta change. But as r goes from 0 to r and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, the little area that they're covering uh, will change. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this right here for now. So we're going to split this up into little chunks right here. And as we take the limit as dr goes to zero, right? So dr is the radius is barely changing here. And as d theta also goes to zero, this wedge right here, which is a circular sector, is going to turn into essentially a triangle because this outer bit is curved, but it's basically going to be the same thing as flat. And if we cut it up into tiny pieces right here, all of these are just mini trapezoids, right? They're mini trapezoids that look like this. But since dr is so small, we can assume that this is kind of be going to be basically like a rectangle. So obviously this length right here is dr. And this like right here is r d theta. I should mention um, this over here, this says little r, this should be big R because this is the radius of the disk. And so 
as R starts at zero, we're not going to be accumulating much area. We're just going to be doing a little bit of area. But as R gets bigger, we're going to be accumulating more area because, as you can see, these trapezoids are much bigger than these ones in here. So this is the area, and then we also already have the height. So the height times the area is the same as the volume. So this is going to be R dr d theta. All right. Now, the only thing that's left to do is v squared. And as we said before, um, we can use omega, right? So if something is r distance out and it's rotate and the whole object is rotating at omega radians per second, that particle is just moving at r times omega units of distance per second, right? So our v is just r omega squared. And so if we reorganize all this into uh, take out all the constants and everything, we're going to end up with um, delta h omega squared over 2 times r cubed dr d theta. And of course, this is just the uh, this is just the kinetic energy of a tiny little chunk of a disk, right? But we need to sum these all up. So we can put a little sum here. But of course, as we know, since we're using dr, uh, these really should have been written as delta r and delta theta, right? But we're taking the limit as these goes to zero, and so they become dr and d theta. So we'll end up with a double integral. And so the first integral is going to be with respect to r. So we know r goes from zero to r, big capital R. We know theta goes from zero to two pi times omega squared dr d theta. So we can actually go ahead and evaluate this. Uh, we can take the, in the theta integral outside because it's just basically, uh, there's no theta inside the integrand. So we're gonna end up with the integral from zero to r, delta h to the squared over two, r cubed dr. And then the integral from zero to two pi of d theta is just two pi. So this two on the bottom is gonna disappear and we'll have a pi. And then the integral from zero to capital R of r cubed dr, so we have pi. This is just gonna be r to the fourth over four. And so this represents the rotational kinetic energy of the spinning disk, but we're gonna do some simplification in order to make this make more sense. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to recognize that pi r squared h is just the volume of the original disk. And so that means delta pi r squared h equals m, or the mass of the original disk. And so this is going to become um, omega squared over 4 r squared times m. And then we're going to do one last reorganization. We're going to do 1 half gamma squared times m r squared over 2. And you recognize that this is pretty similar to what we had before, 1 half mv squared. Now, Omega is basically the same as velocity, just in radians. And instead of m, we have this odd uh, thing right here. We have r squared over 2 times m, which is a bit odd, but, you know, it is what it is. And so this is actually called i. And this is the inertial moment of a rotational object. So this is called the rotational, the inertial moment, and essentially it's what we get by integrating um, and adding up all those little, those little uh, differential pieces of mass and multiplying by r squared. So a, a, a sort of general formula for the rotational kinetic energy is one half omega squared times uh, not, not uh, times i, which is very similar to one half mv squared. So I has a pretty cool way to calculate it. This is the general formula for I. The problem is uh, when we have this dm, this is with differential with respect to mass. So this is sometimes tough to work with because when we're talking about r as the radius, it's not always directly related to mass. However, we can use this formula um, in the case that the mass is constant with respect to the radius or is proportional to the radius stuff like that so for example if we consider a rod right 
and the rod is rotating around this way. Uh, we'll just say that this rod is rotating. So the rod is all the way on one side and it's just kind of rotating around, right? Then actually, if we assume this rod just has a uniform density, so it's just density times whatever length we take of it, then we can write this as dm equals um, because this is constant, right? And L is pretty much the same as R. So if we wanted to calculate I for this rod, it would just be the integral of um, R squared, bring that outside, dr, because L and R are the same thing. And we would end up with delta R cubed over three. And this would be from zero to big R. So this would really be a capital R to represent the overall radius or the overall length of this rod that's rotating around. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna replace this just with L because that makes a lot more sense. So this is L represents the length of the rod, right? And the length times the de density is the same as the mass in this case, so this ends up being mass L cubed over three, right? So that would be I for some kind of spinning rod. So if we wanted to calculate the kinetic energy of a rod of length, I don't know, one centimeter, a uniform density, one gram per centimeter, rotating at one radian per second, then that would be one half radian per second squared times I, which is the mass, which is one gram times the distance squared centimeters squared over three, right? So we would end up with one over six times all these different units. So let's look at some other examples where we can use the formula that we've derived for the disk to create, uh, to figure out the rotational energy of, rotational kinetic energy of other objects. So let's imagine that we have a sphere and this sphere is rotating. I don't really know how to draw a sphere that great. I'm sorry about that. But this sphere is rotating in this direction, right? Now, obviously we could figure out you know, for however much distance out from the center of the sphere, how much mass is there, whatever, um, we could do it that way, but that seems a little bit complicated. So the, the way that we're actually gonna do it is we're gonna say that the sphere is basically just a sum of a bunch of different disks, right? I'm drawing this terribly, but a sphere is essentially just the limit of the sum of a bunch of different disks. And we know that the rotational kinetic energy of a disk is one half omega squared m r squared over two, right? Put that over four over here. And so if this sphere has radius r, uh, has radius r1, we'll say r1 because we don't want to get mixed up with our r's, and it has uniform density delta, then we can uh, write it as the sum of a bunch of different of these, right? So we'll integrate, we'll put our little disks in here and we'll call our distance up and down uh, h. So when h is going to go all the way from negative r1 to r, right? And the rotational kinetic energy of each disk in itself is just this, right? One fourth omega squared times uh, the mass of each disk, which would be pi instead of r. So we, we know that we have this relationship between because we're in a circle. That means that um, the radius of the circle, so we'll call this the radius of the circle of, of each, the radius of the disk, which we'll also call r sub d squared plus h squared equals the radius of the sphere. And so if we want to solve for the radius of the circle, rd is going to equal r1 squared minus h squared. I'll take the square root, right? So that's going to be, so the mass of each disk is going to be pi delta times the, the height of the disk, which is just dh, times square root 
r1 squared minus h squared, right? Um, that's the radius of the disk. And the radius, we are going to square that. So we have pi r squared h times delta. And then we also need to multiply by r squared again. So this is going to be end up to the fourth power. And so if we go ahead and reorganize this, we're going to end up with, uh, bring all the constants outside. So we're going to have delta pi omega squared over 4 times the integral from negative r1 to r1 of r1 squared minus h squared all squared dh. And then if we multiply that out, and so when we integrate this, I'm just going to skip a few steps here, but we're going to end up with, now this first one is clearly just going to be 2r1 to the fifth, right? Then we're going to do a similar thing, negative 4, and then because of the h cubed, we're going to end up over 3. I'm just splitting this into, um, since this is even, we can just say this is 0, and then we multiply all these by 2. So 2 times 2 times 2. And so we're going to end up with 4 over 3, r1 to the fifth. Uh, and then this one is just going to be plus 2 fifths, r1 to the fifth. When we simplify this, we're going to end up with uh, 2 thirds plus 2 fifths, which is the same as 16 fifteenths, uh, r1 to the fifth, right? Yeah. And then times delta pi uh, omega squared over 4. So we're just going to end up with a 4 on the top, right? And so if we go ahead and simplify this a little bit, I'm going to write this as 4 thirds out here, delta pi r1 cubed. Then uh, what's left over is 1 fifth times 1 fifth, right, um, times w squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do w squared over 2, and then I'm going to put a 2 on the top here. And this, if you notice, uh, pi r squared times 4 thirds, that's the same as the volume of the sphere. So when we multiply by delta, that's just the mass. And so what we're going to end up getting is the kinetic energy when it's rotating equals 1 fifth mass times, um, oh, I forgot the r1 squared because this was to the fifth, r1 squared, mass times w squared times r1 squared right? Which means that uh, I equals two-fifths mass R1 squared. So I think that's a pretty cool result. Um, I struggled a little bit in finding it, I'll be honest, but um, yeah, so we can do this with a lot of different shapes. Like for example, if instead of doing a disc, you wanted to do something like a ring that looks like this, you can find the uh, kinetic energy of an outer ring, like a big disk, and then you can subtract a smaller disk, and that'll give you the same thing. You can do a similar thing to what you did with the sphere. You could find the kinetic energy of a cone by just kind of adding up these little um, wedges of disks, right? So uh, I just wanted to give a quick overview, overview of the calculus behind these, um, this cool topic in physics, which some of you may or may not have learned. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.